Good morning. Welcome. It's good to have you with us this morning. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Aware of our sins, we ask the mercy of God to be upon us. Lord Jesus, you are the God of justice. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are God of compassion. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the God of healing. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may bound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Our first reading is a reading from the second book of Kings. In the tenth month of the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his whole army advanced against Jerusalem, encamped around it, and built siege walls on every side. The siege of the city continued until the eleventh year of Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, when famine had gripped the city and the people had no more bread, the city walls were breached. Then the king and all the soldiers left the city by night through the gate between the two walls that was near the king's garden. Since the Chaldeans had the city surrounded, they went in the direction of the Arabah. But the Chaldean army pursued the king and overtook him in the desert near Jericho, abandoned by his whole army. The king was therefore arrested and brought to Riblah, the king of Babylon, who pronounced sentence on him. He had Zedekiah's son slain before his eyes. Then he blinded Zedekiah, bound him with fetters, and had him brought to Babylon. On the seventh day of the fifth month, This was the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Nebuzaradan, captain of the bodyguard, came to Jerusalem as the representative of the king of Babylon. He burned the house of the Lord, the palace of the king, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every large building was destroyed by fire. Then the Chaldean troops who were with the captain of the guard tore down the walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, led into exile the last of the people remaining in the city and those who had deserted to the king of Babylon and the last of the artisans. But some of the country's poor, Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, left behind as vine dressers and farmers. This is the word of the Lord. Then my 
tongue be silent if I ever forget you. By the streams of the Babylon, when we remember Zion on the aspens of that land. We hung our heart, let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I reflect on all the various healing miracles recorded in the scriptures, I'm always drawn in particular to the healing of the lepers. Today in Matthew, it's a single leper. 
I'm drawn to them as we know leprosy in and of itself has all but been eradicated from our country, from the world. And yet that sense of isolation, that, se that sense of being unwanted, has not. In fact, it in some ways runs rampant. I think these days of the thousands of people across our country and around the world who died in isolation, who died alone, as if they had leprosy, out of fear of the consequences. But along comes Jesus, unafraid, unafraid to be near the leper. Now, there's good reason why in this pandemic we are taking all the precautions that we are taking. Don't get me wrong, we should be doing them and probably even more. But when it comes to that sense of being unwanted, of being isolated, of being set apart, there is a lot of work to do. I'm reminded of my aunt, my father's older sister, reminiscing one day about growing up in a small town not far from here and what it was like to be a Catholic in that small town back when she was a child. And how when they went out on the playground on more than one occasion, the other children would form a circle around her and dance around her and taunt her and call her not-so-complimentary things all because of her faith. I think of the people today who feel lost and abandoned, who contemplate suicide because they do not think there is anyone listening to them. I think of people that by the very virtue of the color of their skin are kept apart from others or how others, the way they might think or act or believe, are set apart. But along comes Jesus, unafraid, unafraid to embrace the modern-day outcasts. And as powerful as this healing, this physical healing of the gospel today, how much more powerful is the spiritual healing we experience in reconciliation? The healing we experience when we choose to be reconciled with someone from whom we've been estranged. Or the amazing healing that comes about emotionally when we finally choose to let go of some particular pain or hurt or suffering that someone else has caused. And along comes Jesus, who embraces our pain, who walks the walk, does not only talk the talk, and he offers us healing. What then, my friends, is our role today in the world? It is not to cast judgment. It is not to continue to perpetuate someone's isolation, but rather to walk with, to embrace the pain of another, and to offer them the healing spirit of Jesus. Mindful of our needs, mindful of God's presence, we now pray. We pray for Pope Francis.
May God continue to give him strength and good health as he leads the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our elected leaders. May the power of God inspire them in their work for a just and lasting peace in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who are sick. May Christ, the divine physician, see their need and bring strength and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our community here at Holy Redeemer. May the Lord purify and sanctify us through his word and sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have passed away. May the Lord welcome them into his eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray especially today for Father Jack and Dorothy Sims, whom we remember in this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and loving God, we lift up to you once again our needs, confident we are heard. Help us wherever we go this day to be the face of your Son, Jesus, in whom we make this our prayer. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, and all servants of the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Knowing we are in the midst of the God who loves us, we have the courage and the privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed to be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go and continue to love and serve one another. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day.